hello. These here lined up along this path are the four olive trees which you've seen in several of my videos. I've done a video on olive tree care, I've done a video on olive tree pruning and today I'm going to do a video on olive tree planting because these four olives are going in this long border here and I'm putting them in here in order to give this border which eventually is going to be a scented border with lavender and rosemary some all year round structure and height. These are the two which I pruned last summer and you can see these are already thickening out nicely in the centre and the two at the far end are the two which I only pruned about a month ago and they're already starting to show new signs of new growth so that's quite encouraging and within 12 months they'll all be nice round lollipops I'm not going for fruit this year so I don't need to worry too much about the pruning regime I'm just going for structure and I want some nice lollipop balls about this height in addition to the olives and the scented plants I'm also putting in some box plants these were left over from the parterre which I planted at the front of the cottage fortunately I had 12 so my idea is to put four of them together in between equidistant between the four olive trees and make four very formal cubes and again that will give me some all year round structure it will look quite formal for this whole scented border because some of the scented plants will die back in the winter time today's job is just getting the olive trees into the ground so that they can start growing and enjoying the summer season ahead and get some roots in so that by winter they'll be well established these are quite happy all year round in the UK I've had these for about six years and I've never had to protect them during the winter time so here against the sheltered wall which is actually east and south facing they'll be fine outdoors I will need to import quite a lot of soil from here I've got a border down there which is a raised bed which I'm dismantling it's full of soil so that soil will be imported and reused here it's quite good rich soil I don't need to worry too much about the soil quality for these olives because if you think about where they come from which is quite impoverished gritty infertile soil it's clear that they'll do well without too much irritant. but I will feed them on a regular basis just to keep the leaves happy so these I bought about five or six years ago they came in quite small pots and in this video which I'll post a link to here you can see when I first originally repotted them and in that video it was very clear that there wasn't enough drainage in the pot and that they were very pot brown so the important thing if you're keeping an olive tree in a pot is make sure it's very well drained and let them dry out between each watering you can see here on mine I've left a two or three inch gap above the soil level before the top of the pot that's so that I can really flood it every time I water it which in the summertime is about once a week and then I almost let it dry out before I water it again it doesn't want soggy roots and it has to be well drained so I'm going to take this out of this pot now and show you what's going on underneath and there is the root ball I don't know if you can see my face but already you can see it's grown to the extent of the pot now I want to point out that when I planted these in these pots at the bottom of each pot I put lots of gravel that was for drainage I also put crocs and there are several holes at the bottom of these pots put a croc a flat croc over each hole to stop the soil getting washed through and then I buried those crocs in these gravel in this gravelly grit and you can see here that a lot of that gravelly grit is actually stuck into the bottom of the soil but nevertheless roots are coming through so you can see some lovely fibrous roots and this is probably the perfect time to get these into the ground so that those roots can go and explore for food I've got four of these to do I won't show you me doing all four I'll just do one and then you've got the idea of it but the main point so far is they're like well-drained soil they like to be in a sunny position in the summertime they will survive all winter and these have done very well in these pots it's been in these pots since last summer you can see how well they've grown and I'm now going to get this one into the earth let me show you the hole so here's the hole that I've dug I've measured the depth of this hole against the depth of the pot to make sure I'm about the right depth now I'm very fortunate here because having removed several boulders of builders rubble 
I found that underneath I've got very sandy soil and that's wonderful because that's very free draining and that would be great for these olives. I've mentioned it several times, I've mentioned it again, they don't want wet roots, they want free draining soil so that will be ideal for these plants. If you've got very moist, soggy soil, get some grit into it, get some drainage into it before you plant your olive, otherwise it will suffer. You'll probably notice the leaves going off colour first and then you wonder what's going on. It's likely because it's got too much water at the root. Next thing I'm going to do is offer this plant up and make sure it's at the right depth because I don't want to put it into the ground to a depth any deeper than it was originally in the pot. I am a little bit concerned about the depth here. I don't want it any deeper and I think I might need to lift that up probably about two inches so I'm going to put some soil underneath it and I will dig some pelleted chicken manure into that soil again just to give those roots a bit of a head start. While I've got it in the hole I'm going to scrape that gravel off the bottom because that might be inhibiting the root growth so it's got an open space there but I'll leave it in the hole for some drainage. The thatch roof here doesn't have any gutters on and there's a drip line which is about here because I don't want it dripping at the root but I don't mind it dripping slightly off the root there. That will help keep it watered when it needs to be watered in the summertime and the sand below will help that water disperse into the surrounding ground. So here we go. So this is the raised bed area I told you about a moment ago. This is where I'm going to retrieve soil from quite good soil as well to fill the olive tree border which you can see along the side of the cottage behind me in the distance. This soil has probably been here several years it's quite compacted it was under this weed fabric which I've rolled back and discovered this lovely free draining soil and that'd be ideal for my scented olive tree border. It's probably going to about take about eight or nine or ten barrel loads for the border alone so I won't make you watch me move eight or nine or ten barrel loads I'll just get a couple out so that I can get the first olive tree in and then there's a couple of other points which I want to make about those olive trees so hang around I'll see you in a moment so here we are back at the hole there's the soil I've just brought over Here's the olive tree. I'm just going to remove as many of these weeds on the top as possible to avoid it having too much competition. They can go in the bottom of the hole. They will rot down and provide food. Green stuff is quite nitrogen rich. Some of this top dressing can go in there as well. I'm also going to just gently tease some of these roots away just to release, release them from the direction that they were traveling in when they reach the edge of the pot and that will encourage them to go off sideways instead of round in a big circle some pelleted chicken manure here I'm going to put a little bit in the bottom not too much you don't know how to do it there's always a risk that you can burn the roots of the plant if you put too much on I'm also going to sprinkle some on top of the soil in the wheelbarrow and mix it in a little bit. I want to pull this wrapper in the soil into the hole. A little bit of water into the hole beneath the plant before I put it in the hole. And that will, that will actually start to dissolve those chicken manure pellets and help to disperse the food that's in them into the soil around. So I mentioned earlier that I want more soil in there because I want to lift it up a bit. I don't want to bury it any deeper because I don't want to risk any root rot or any stem rot by soil coming up the trunk. So I'm going to put a bit more soil in there first. offer that up again and see how it looks that's better that's a more appropriate level that gives me from the top of here a couple of inches to put a gravel mulch on top 
I want it as close up here as possible because the drip line for the thatch is around here and I don't want it running down the trunk. So I'm quite happy for it to be watered from the drip line and the thatch down about here. So that's about right. I always make my holes with a slope side because it makes it easier to backfill and that's the next job really is going to backfill with some soil. This also releases a lovely big pot for me to use for something else. Before I backfill, I just want to look at this plant and make sure I've got it vertical and also that I've got the right aspect facing out away from the house. I mean, it will full out, fill out and bush out anyway eventually, but I want to be looking at the best side of it. And I think the best side of it is, is this side here. So I shall rotate it by 180 degrees. As so. Maybe back a bit. That's about right. I'll put a bit of soil in, then I'll verticalize it. That's a word I've just invented. And then when I'm sure it's vertical, by looking at it from several different directions, I'll backfill the rest. When you're checking something's vertical, don't do it close up, go from a distance. That's about vertical. It doesn't really matter, I can always change it if I really need to, but it's best to get it vertical before you backfill it, otherwise you're disrupting it once again. So that's about right, and I'm going to backfill it now. Now, I said I wanted to mention another couple of things, so I'm slightly OCD, I've got four of these. I want to put them in a perfect straight line, equidistant along this long narrow border. So I'm going to put the far end one in first and then I'm going to put a line between the two far end ones and then I'm going to position the other two in the middle on that line so that when I look down I almost can't see the far trunk because the other trunks are in the way and I think that will look really well. <coughs> so there's our first olive planted. I've left a bit of a, a valley around the outside of the root wall because that will help the water until it gets established drain through one in three more to do and then i will start planting the box plants which will form three nice formal cubes in the fullness of time